Hello YouTube, this is Darkon633, and today is another review of my Blast of the Past review series in the month of November. And this time we'll be moving on to Transformers Animated Voyager Class Grimlock. Now, while this Grimlock does have a few issues just from the articulation and various other things that kind of do get on my nerves, I still think this is a very good design of Grimlock, and I really enjoy what Hasbro and the current design team did to design the figure. And, strange enough, this does remind me of... The G1 toy in some aspects, since it does have a lot of cues from the G1's toys, transformation, and various other things. So, it's very cool what they've done so far. Anyways, his articulation, he does have a single swivel on his head, and there isn't a whole lot you can get from there. But it does feature some good light piping. Just to show how it looks like without the light there. His shoulders, while loose on mine over the years can swivel really nicely and can bend upwards as well. And then for the arms, this is where it gets a little strange. Because of the way that these form his knees in beast mode, it is a bit strange as you can see there just by the way it's designed. It kind of does this in backwards kind of thing, so it's a bit strange there. But he does have a good elbow joint there. His hands can swivel, so that's really nice. And he does feature waist articulation, which can go all the way around, which is impressive. He does have ball jointed, well, not really ball jointed, but more like swivels. Can bend outwards and inwards, and can also bend outwards there. Can bend outwards in this direction due to transformation, and it can swivel. And no other real articulation points there. In this mode, he does have an action feature. Well, not so much the figure itself, but the sword does. What you need to do is turn it, which transformed off cameras, my bad. What you're going to do is turn this, and then the sword activates, and a bunch of flames pop off from the side there. That's because inside the sword is a very tiny button, which gets pressed once it turns, and you can just slide this back. And there you have the sword, like normal. Transformation, this is where it gets a bit strange, which we'll see after we fully transform it. You're gonna turn these around, push these up, push the smaller fingers as well. Forgot to tell that these are articulated. Open up these pieces, and this is where it becomes very close to the G1 in terms of toy, in terms of our transformation, my bad. And you're going to pull these up so that they go up here. So it looks like this for now. We're going to push this piece, which also is very close to the G1 toy. You're going to pull his dino hands out. You're going to slide this down some more and peg them together. And then what you're going to do next is push up, push down, should I say, piece like that, and there you have them there, pull down these pieces on both sides, bend like that, I'm going to take these and snap them together, and push them into the joint there, could be a bit tricky. I'm going to snap everything into place. There you go. And then pull these tail pieces together. And there you have Grimlock in his beast mode. Which I'm very impressed that they took the G1 design and changed it just a tiny bit. And still made a really nice design Grimlock figure. Now here in this mode is where it becomes a bit finicky for me, and that's because right here there isn't any panel to hide any of that kibble area, so other than that it's pretty much hidden in terms of the way that his beast mode into robot mode is, except for a few pieces that's there and so on, but I just wish there was a way that the Hasbro and Takara toy designers was able to hide that piece, but it's understandable since it would be a bit tricky to kind of get that together. What's cool is that in this mode he does have a slight action gimmick where if you press this button, his mouth does open, so he does have a somewhat articulated jaw, but just by the way 
that is designed. And in this mode, the sword, there isn't really any way to store it, unfortunately. You pretty much just have to keep it to the side, so it is a bit annoying that there isn't a way to attach it. But then again, the G1 toy wasn't able to hide any of his swords either. Articulation-wise, it's a lot less in this mode, since all you pretty much get is this on both sides. And you can kind of bend outwards and swivel. But other than that, that's pretty much it for articulation-wise. And besides the large gap that's visible there, it's still a really nice figure. And he does feature some light piping here too, just to show a little difference. So that's really nice. To transform him back into robot mode, what we're going to do is push these in first. Turn these around to reveal the hands, open up the tail, so it looks like that, snap apart these pieces, snap these together, snap these to the sides, bend these in a position where it can stand straight instead of in a crooked position, then you're going to open up these pieces Put away the hands, push this entire piece down, push that up, and then snap it down. And there you have Grimlock back in his robot mode. Now, I really enjoyed this toy overall, and it's actually one of my most favorite Dinobot designs we had in a long time. And it's really nice to get a hold of this mold, even if it is a bit expensive from what I remember looking up online not too long ago, so it is a bit tricky to get a hold of. But fans of Grimlock or and or Dinobots should definitely get a hold of this mold, since it's really impressive what the toy can do. And I really like the design overall of this take on Grimlock. Now, I'll be back next week with another Blast in the Past review, but for now, please comment and subscribe, and check out Hero Talk and the Gideon blog as soon as they reopen. Also, please check out my Twitter handle under Darkon633, and please check down the other channels down below, including the WW Podcast and more. But for now, I'll be seeing you too. Bye.